I think if we get to the re-engagement campaigns and just like, okay, so now we, now we know we need clean data, right? Yeah. Like, exactly. and we know how to do that, but, but now how do we get more money out of that database, right? Like what are some of the things we can do? Yeah, exactly. And how are validation and hygiene such important components of a re-engagement campaign? Because you want to re-engage obviously all these contacts who maybe haven't opened up an email or participated in any of, or, partaken in any of your content over the past year or so and you're sending out this email and you're like wow my deliverability has gone way downhill what where do i go from here how do i solve this because that's the last thing you want to happen right yeah i mean so there's a lot of i think if you again google or talk to a deliverability consultant they're going to say you know as matt alluded to oh man my google or my gmail inbox placement doesn't look too good my open rates are down what should i do and they're most common advice would be, hey, shelve your, your inactives, right? You, you got to put those inactives on the shelf. Don't mail to them. If they haven't been opening your email in the past six months or past year, or maybe even past 90 days, put them on the shelf and let's just work with those active folks to get your reputation back up. And that seems like an effective strategy, but it could also be considered maybe just short-sighted, right? How do we now get back to, I have all this data on the shelf and I have to meet revenue objectives with this data, right? Like we've got to drive business. These folks are interested in your service. Maybe they bought before your products. Um, they're, uh, it's organic data, it's very valuable data. So how do we get back into that data? Um, and Matt, I think has a ton of experience with helping clients um, re-engage that data. Uh, so I'll kick it back to you, Matt, and, and in terms of some good strategies to get that data back in play. Sure. Thanks, Brian. And really, regardless of, of your industry, we have a pretty similar blueprint that we lay out to all our customers to take them kind of through a step-by-step -step process to help them really uncover that, that revenue that's within their database. So I think re-engagement campaigns are viewed as a bit risky for really two reasons. Uh, number one, as we alluded to, you know, we don't know who might still be active on the email address that we have. Is that that person's primary email? Is that their second or third email at this point in time? And the second component is we may not know enough about that customer. You know, how do we re-engage them? Did they stop engaging because we were mailing them offers or content maybe wasn't specific enough to them? So those two components we're going to bring together and create kind of a roadmap on how to safely re-engage uh, emails that are within your database from either former customers or prospects who have clicked and engaged at one point in time. So the first component is how do we identify whose emails are still active? And one of the unique solutions that Tower Data has outside of validation, which is very specific to re-engagement, is our email opener data. So we receive about 50 million unique email open signals on a monthly basis from our network of email publishers for U.S. consumer emails. And over the course of the year, we have about 200 million emails with known open activity that we index from that we give our clients the opportunity to match their data to. And if you think about it, if there's about 150 million U.S. adults and the average person has about two to three emails, that's, that's pretty sizable coverage of the U.S. consumer emails that we have activity data on. And so what clients will do is they'll say, hey, I have a million emails. These are former customers or prospects that we haven't mailed in a while. They would be able to upload those to our platform. We would be able to typically flag about 30 or 40 percent of those users and say, hey, here are the most active openers and, and clickers. Let's start with this group. And that way you, you have a confirmed open and activity that, hey, this person's email is still primary and they're still active on it. So this process is a couple steps ahead of validation is really focused on finding those actives in the inactive records. And then the second component is addressing, do we know enough about our customers, right? So if you ask, ask yourself the question, do we know what they purchased before? Do we know the age group, gender, location of our customers? Do we know what those customers look like and, and what messages we should be putting in front of them in the specific segments? Great, build those out. If you don't, because that data admittedly is pretty hard to collect, right? You're, you're trying to get them to purchase. You don't want to start prompting them questions saying, hey, 
tell me about this, tell me about that. So our email intelligence tool would allow customers to upload those opener matches, those emails, and we can pretty much append almost any data point that you would need to market to them better. So if you need that data to create more targeted segments based on those high level uh, demographics or data points, we can provide that second part of the equation. And now that you have a manageable number of emails, where in this case, let's say you had 400,000 known openers compared to a million, then you can start building out anywhere from a four to six email cadence to these folks over a couple weeks and giving them an incentive to re-engage, right? And understanding that they haven't heard from you in a while, they're, they're very likely to open, but you wanna be conscientious about warming up that process, not trying to go for a sale on the first or second email. Mention to them, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. You know, here's an incentive to take a look at our site, whether it's free shipping, a, a discount code, or something that would say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna take the time to take a look and um, try to get them back re-engaged. And then as you're tracking the metrics of the performance within your, your ESP, as those folks open and click, then you would be able to migrate them to your more active um, cadences based on the open signals. And, we're typically seeing about a three to four times increase in email open rates targeting uh, known known openers. So it's a real nice, easy, safe way to immediately generate revenue where, you know, literally for fractions of a penny to find the active records in your database compared to maybe a dollar, two dollars, three dollars to go out and acquire a new email it's very efficient and very quick and very cost effective to to help us find your active records and get some intelligent um, cadences out to them rather than going through the process of you know acquiring emails at a significantly higher cost and a significantly longer acquisition cycle. Yeah, so that, I mean, I think there's a lot there. Um, you know, I think the, the main thing is, right, when you're going to re-engage, you know, be smart about it. Um, make sure you're, you're, you're mitigating the risk of um, sending to, to additional inactive data. Um, a couple other ideas, again, around the theme of additional revenue within that email database, multi-channel is another great thing to consider. If you're not already using direct mail to complement your email list, um, we think it's a great thing to consider, uh, and if, and um, you know, so take all those those email or the postal addresses that you have. Of course, you're going to want to NCOA those and work with your letter shop. And if there's records for which you don't have a postal address, we can help you with that too. Um, and the other piece is display, right? So Facebook custom audiences. Maybe take that email list, load it into Facebook. If you're not already doing that, you can target directly to those folks and um, touch them in another another place. Right, so you're hitting them on Facebook, you're hitting them with direct mail, you're hitting them with email, and we think all of that is is going to really drive additional revenue um, you know, in a combined approach. And Brian, you touching on direct mail is funny because it seems like that's something that, as email has become more prominent over the past six or seven years, hasn't been as much as the a focus. But you know, one thing that I always bring up to my customers that do do it and the customers that do it seem to do pretty well is that you know when you consider the the average person between their business and personal email gets between 75 and 125 emails a day that space mm -hmm. from a personal standpoint and a business space is very crowded and i'm not sure if you check your your mailbox often but you know yeah. you there's not a lot in there so you're, you're not going to get lost yeah. in, the sh in, in, in the shuffle. And I know a lot of big brands like uh, Brooks Brothers, they do a lot of catalog mailing. They send like a really nice bounded catalog or a really nice um, kind of postcard with a certain, you know, discount code. So there's a, there's a lot of really strong brands that I think use that as part of their branding. And 
I, I don't know about you, but you know, whenever my wife gets a, a nice catalog or a mailer, it seems to just hang around the house for five or six days where in an email, it just hangs around for 30 seconds and goes and, yeah. and gets deleted. So there's, there's that subtle kind of brand building that I think there. And I think a direct mail for especially luxury brands, I, I think could be very, very, um, very helpful to, to supplement uh, direct mail. And there's just not a lot of competition in your mailbox, your postal mailbox as there is the, the inbox. 